it's time for a quarantine review. But let's get serious, folks. There's a pandemic going on. Come on, we're staying indoors. That's why we're, uh, we're recording video thing, v VHS tape reviews in, our, in, a, in a garage like a lunatic. And let's talk about uh, a great first start to, to be choosing to do this, this thing that I'm doing a great first solid choice, a movie that I didn't even, didn't even like that much, but that, and that would be uh, Conan the Barbarian. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger from 1982, directed by John Milius. Okay, produced by Dino De Laurentiis. Let's see, let's see. What happens in this thing? You know, I'm kind of a, a Schwarzenegger purist in that there are still a handful of his that I've not seen, but I have every intention to, I guess I can take that off, to see all of them. Because there's something so viscerally uh, satisfying about Schwarzenegger. He's so, he has such a commanding presence and such silly one-liners, of course, that he's so known for. But the thing about him is that he's pretty fearless and he fully commits to everything he does, no matter how bad the script is, no matter how ridiculous the scenario is. Um, he fully commits. There is no, there's no halfway when you look in his eyes. He's, he is that thing, whether it's Mr. Freeze, or, um, you know, one of the other guys. So, this movie, uh, I'm not a big fan of sword and sorcery genre, but I, I was like, you know, I, I, I need to see what this is about. And it's so silly. It's such an incompetent movie. Uh, okay, so we're gonna start with a big, this big legend of like, of like a sword being made in a, in a lava pit or something, or out of lava or something, and then his dad tells him, uh, Conan, young Conan with long hair, swords are the, steel is the most magical, uh, we worship steel or something. And so his dad has a big fancy sword, but then long-haired, uh, uh, James Earl Jones comes along, kills his dad, beheads his mom right in front of him, and we're going, okay, so, so now he's got kind of his, uh, sort of motive going on. So he grows up, he, he becomes captured, you know, he has to push this little wheel for his entire life, and you see him growing up, like, truly child labor, uh, torture, horrible situation. And this little guy grows up, and, and uh, it's sort of insinuated that that's how he gets big Arnold muscles, is by pushing this wheel uh, for his entire life. And there's no psychological damage whatsoever. There's no sort of a lack of stimulation leading to his mental decay. It's just, like, he pushes it for 20 years, and then he's fine. And then he becomes a gladiator. Then he fights some guys, and at first he's not very good, but then of course he gets very good. And uh, then he becomes a cold-blooded killer, and then he, uh, for, for no reason, this guy sets him free. Okay, so his pal sets him free, who was kind of not his pal earlier, and, and I guess, uh, I, okay, I, so I guess Dino De Laurentiis, that's a movie to you. That's kind of a movie to you where we go, let's establish this guy who's kind of his enemy, and then all of a sudden he lets him go. But, uh, uh, so, then what happens is that he, is that he goes off on his own and he bangs a witch for no reason, uh, which is kind of interesting. Lots of breasts in this movie. Lots of naked female breasts. Because it was written, uh, by a 12-year-old boy who was horny, and, and is written for 12-year-old boys who are horny. Or, you know, um, other people, too. So there's a, yeah there's a whole lot of uh, female nudity in this one and um, it uh, it has not aged well in in that sense but it is also kind of um, kind of silly and cute because it's the eighties and, it, and it's so over the top and just absurd that it's like okay eighties I, I understand sort of what you were doing but this movie is cut so strangely the the writers didn't feel any need to sort of give you some uh, the character's intention or what exactly he's doing or why he's interacting with these random people. It sort of jumps from scene to scene. He runs across the desert with his Asian friend that he meets and they're kind of sidekick guys and they're kind of thieves and they go to this city where there's a gigantic red ruby that they have to steal from a giant snake. And um, it's like, oh, this is the most you know uh, valuable gem in the whole world and it's super hard to get and they sneak in and get it in like five seconds, like truly, like first attempt, they get it, and he wrestles with a big snake, and um, the and the and uh, uh, what's her name? Who helps him out? Who helps him out? Sandal Bergman, Queen of Thieves. She plays v Valeria, Queen of Thieves, 
Uh, and I guess she is because it only takes her 30 seconds to steal the hardest gem in the whole world. So that's pretty cool. And uh, that's where we get introduced to the snake cult, which is always good to have in a motion picture. If you, if you, if you ever want to see a movie with a snake cult in it, um, then you know you have a good movie that you're watching. And this is one of them. So then this king, this crazy king, uh, played by Max von Sydow. So, so I, I don't know how to say his name. Um, he's one of the great actors, whatever. I don't, I, sorry, don't know how to pronounce it. And he's like, hey, uh, you know, my daughter, this broad is, is over. Uh, these, the snake cult took her and she's, she got wooed by James Earl Jones. And he's like, hey, you guys, I know you just stole the big ruby. Um, instead of getting you in trouble, he's like, hey, you're pretty good at stealing things. How about you go steal my daughter back from James Earl Jones? And they're like, okay, yeah, we can do that. We can do that. Sure, sure. We'd be glad to do that for you. We would, we can definitely go ahead and do that, is what they say. So... Then they, uh, the, uh, then at some point they get separated. You know, Artie's kind of on his own. He meets a, a witch doctor or a wizard or something in the in the desert who does absolutely no wizardy things the entire film. But he has the title of wizard, so cool, man. That's good. I guess that you know, cool wizard work there. So then they get to the snake cult, and there's a whole bunch of people dressed, you know, remarkably similar to sort of KKK uh apparel and that's sort of no, you know sort of no good um pretty you know pretty strongly no good there but um but it's not kkk because this is in the um you know the something the something hundreds this is real early so you know they were still cool with all people and stuff that, but they worshiped snakes and um they uh have uh big orgies and they eat uh people stew which is kind of cool and um, so Arnie and the gang sneak in there and they, uh, I don't know, James Earl Jones turns into a snake and he easily evades them. He runs away like three different times. And then Arnie, uh, okay, so Ar uh, Arnold uh, Conan, he, he gets killed and then he comes back to life, I guess. He gets crucified on the tree of woe. The symbolism, I'm just like, wow, uh, guy who wrote Conan excellent uh stealing from the bible as sort of like a plot point and and they're like oh yeah but it's different than the bible but it's also like well you sort of just you know it's just a pretty direct correlation there so that is ex uh you know extremely cool it's a big cool tree and some vultures bite on him and then guess what his pals show up and save him but he's already dead and then the wizard is like well you can do some of these things you can draw some uh symbols on him and that's sort of a good thing to do is uh, sort of drawn in with a sharpie, and then he uh, he sit, uh, he he's tied up overnight, and some demons try to get him, and then he comes back to life. And his girlfriend that he just met, who who says she wants to devote her heart and and would go to uh, hell and back for him, uh, that he just met two days earlier, is uh, is like, hey Arnie, you know, so glad you're back and stuff. So let's go kill James Earl Jones and get his, uh, you know, find out where he gets his haircut, you know. So they get the king's daughter and then they set up this little uh, booby trap sort of home alone ending because they know James Earl Jones and his goons are going to come after him. And um, he, uh, they kill all the goons and um, Arnie gets a broken sword. By the way, okay, there's like three different swords in this movie. They set up that there's this one magical sword and he finds a different one in a cave that he takes from a skeleton. But it's like, you would think that they would establish that there's one super de duper magical sword that Conan gets forever. But he gets, he, 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 he interacts with like 11 different swords. So I'm like, okay, Dino De Laurentiis, good producing. Maybe choose a sword, asshole. So anyway, that's kind of... So, so anyway, eventually a James Earl Jones gets killed and then they, uh, and then Conan becomes king. So that's kind of a, so that's one movie that you can watch, um, called Conan the, Bar the Barber.